<laughs> See when you beat Hopkins, like, was Freddie Roach Hopkins' trainer? Yeah, Freddie Roach. So how does Enzo, your father, a musician, but then <clears throat> being able to compete with one of the greatest trainers of all time to then, because did he not use music notes as like, for techniques for yourself no, like like, six and seven I don't know where they get that from we just we just we just had our own style from young it's hard to explain we just evolved our style you know my dad you know we love Marvin Hagler Sugar Ray Leonard so he tried to blend them like both together so like my dad is like he wasn't just me you know he was obviously he trained Gavin Reese from his Junior World Champion or oh, Enzo Mack come to this gym become World Champion Nathan Cleverly, to be honest, you know, he, he was from this gym. He's trained us as a kid. So he, he was he was a world champion. So it's no coincidence. He had such a tremendous energy, my dad. He so, had so much, so, so, such an energy. But not just that, he just knew me. He was the best trainer world for me. He knew every style would be awkward. He knew Hopkins would be awkward for me. He knew he would be awkward. He, he knew me inside out. He's watched me thousands around sparring. He, I used to spar with my dad growing up. He, he could box a bit. You know, we used to spar together. And um, he knew it would, would be tough, that fight. But uh, he was 100% confident, you know, that, that would win. But he knew I'd have to work. He knew that Hopkins would spoil, spoil, go backwards, which I hate. I like people coming to me. I love to counter punch to chase a fight. So, after you know, you go back to your corner after the first round. You're in Las Vegas. You fucking just got dropped. You're thinking, shit, I'm two rounds down already. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, oh, and it was frustrating. I kept trying to throw punches. He kept holding on. It was just frustrating. Like, I was, I had so much more energy. It wasn't a hard fight. It was, it was a frustrating fight. It wasn't hard. It's was like, I was fresh after 12 rounds. I didn't feel really tired, you know. But Hawkins, like, he's just an expert, you know. He just, you know, he's an all-time great, isn't he? You know, to be an all-time great. And I think... Considering he was an old man when I boxed him, I think six years afterwards he won the world title at fifty. So I think that win is is shows one of my, you know one of my best wins, if not the best wins, because yeah. you know he's a, he's an all time great. You know? To get an American and beat an American in their own backyard, especially split decision. As yeah. soon as it says split decision, you must be thinking, "Fuck, I'm out. I've lost. I've yeah. got that. I've got that loss to my name." But to win that is unbelievable again. So when you were getting through that, were you fighting that 12th round thinking, this is my last round? I just, I, all I was thinking was just work, work, work. I think after six rounds, I felt I was on top. Um, I, Cause although, although the, it was a messy fight, I felt I was doing, outworking him, you know, um, he was just trying to buy time. He was fighting low blows and pretending he got it in the fucking balls. And I was like, yeah, come on, get him. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so he just, Nerve wracking, you know. I mean, it's nerve wracking that. Um, so when they say I had a new, and it was like, yeah. So I, that was it, really. And um, I'll be honest, my last fight. It's uh, I knew it was going to be my last fight. I, I spoke to Dad. We didn't say it to the press, but this is it now for me. I just felt this was it. You know, I was cutting corners, going into my last fight. Uh, against Roy Jones Jr. Um, and my dad sensed it, you know. I remember one day, I think I uh, skipped training. About four weeks, I was still in great shape, but I skipped about two days. And he said, hey, he said, you know what? You're going to get your fucking ass kicked. What are you about? He said, I know. What do you mean, know what? I feel like a piss a fucking day before. <laughs> it's only one day in like, you know, in about 10 weeks I've ever done that. And I um, had a few drinks. Why did you think you done that? Um, why did I do that? It's just, I don't know. I just, well, that's what I'm saying. I knew it was time to quit because, you know, going back to the world, you know, and legacy, I, feel, I felt I'd done everything. I, financially, I felt I was secure. I beat the Hopkins, you know, and then, but then you, you go up there, maybe it's your ego as well, you know, it's just like, you know, you got the trappings, you got the money now, you know, sports personality of the year award, this, you know, and you're thinking, yeah, I don't know, it's, uh, it's, it's God test us all, isn't it? So um, <laughs> it was, um, I come back and dad said, you're going to, all you work for, you're going to fucking get beat. I went, what are you talking about? He just had a knack of knowing what to say and when to say it. Because we were so close. He's like my best friend. Brother. Not just my trainer, best friend, like since little, since I was a kid, he just knew me so much. 
I knew how to me take. And trust me, we went, we went, went and trained on the pads and I smashed the pads because of what he said. And um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, bless him, man. Bless him. How was that? Madison Square Garden, your last fight, Roy Jones, what's going through your mind? Did you feel mentally sharp going into that fight? Yeah, I felt I felt confident. I felt sharp. Uh, if you watch the fight, I'm dropping my hands. I still, even today, I don't know. It wasn't a plan. It just something that happened. And I think you can see in that fight, I knew it was my last fight. I was just enjoying myself. Fuck, except for the first round, I went off. I fucking went on the floor and gave <laughs> Whoa, I got up. Like, <laughs> shit. And it was like a forearm. We look back, I went down on street, got caught with a forearm. Um, I got up, but I, um, I remember going there into the Madison Square Garden in the afternoon when they just put the ring together. And I was just looking around thinking, fucking, this is it, man. This is my last fight. I, since I was a kid, like I'm, I'm in Madison, micro box, I'm in Madison Square Garden. And then it's like tingly, you know what I mean? It was like the atmosphere and just really soaking in the energy. And, and during the fight, you know, I was, uh, whether I could have stopped Roy Jones or not, I, you know, I, I was happy. I was I was enjoying doing the twelve rounds, and um, I always remember like the last few rounds. I still remember thinking, Joe, just look around. Last three rounds of your life, last two rounds, and the last round I was like, this is the last round of your life, man. Just enjoy it. I, I, that's what was that was what was in my head, and that was it. And um, after that fight, I knew that would be it. That would make a comeback. It wouldn't come back. People were saying, well, why don't you just get the 50-0? You'd like three off, making history. But it just, that was my number, number 46. I was just, you know, I was like I said, I would just felt like it was time to think about my children, you know. Hmm. Maybe, maybe think about myself, you know what I mean? Because like I said, I was getting injured all the time. You're, you're getting punched. You're 